Hello everyone, this is Grayshot117, you bring you another COH2 replay, brought to you by, skip this part for you want to know, ABUC, thank you for submitting it, in any case we have one Vermock, one Soviet, a classic COH2, with a very high ranking player versus a very low ranking player, we'll see how well things go. In any case, make sure if you want to submit a replay, you do so via my Gmail or uh, Facebook. Just head on there and just submit it. Either my Grayshaw Productions page on Facebook or so you can send to me via uh, my Gmail. Just make sure that the attachment is uh, the replay with a short description and your name. It's kind of important to know who you are so I can, you know, say thank you for submitting the replay. Just like I guess I can say thank you to Ace to Carter, to Sean, and to Tim for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You guys rock. Seriously, you guys support me so much. It is amazing. But in any case, let's move on, shall we? We have, it looks like an MG focus for actually both teams, I would assume. Let's see. If I can switch out. Nope, actually, penal. I'm sorry. Pen bleh, penal. Switch it over. So we have a penal focus, heavier infantry. We're seeing some lighter infantry with uh, Pioneers and Grandiers, but nothing that major. Um, Grandiers in heavy cover can still hold off penal troops, especially when there's an MG right behind it. This map, 1v1 map, is Fomon Approach. I've seen this map quite a few times. Um, not a bad map, not at all. Very interesting, lots of like, I, it, it feels like a grid. It really does, just how the map design and layout this kind of is. You can see here a box here, box here, box here, box there, box bomb, box top, box on the right, box on the left. It feels like a bunch of just tiny squares of engagement. More so than other maps. That may seem weird, but at least that's how I see it in my eyes. Penal troops trying to go in for the flank, but the MG's like, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? What was that? Anyway, Kite, in the meantime, has not upgraded to phase one. Looks like he's trying to get a bunker out for defense. There's a lot of territory, though, to guard. So I don't think that may necessarily work, especially with penal troops. Because remember, penals have satchel charges. Now, he doesn't have a lot of munitions, so right now he doesn't have to worry. But, you know, could be something where he just walks around here and throws a satchel and blows it up. But it's a good way to have people try to rush for this the first time. Hopefully... Um, they won't get it, and then, of course, they keep doing it, which is something, eh, may or may not happen. Looks like the engineer's just walking around, just capturing territory non-stop. We have the penal troops hanging left for munitions, because they realize, oh, we need munitions! We actually have the right side cut off. We can see here, that it is cut off from territory, meaning, the munitions over here and the fuel not going back to the Axis. So the Axis actually does not have a ton of resources right now. They need to capture this territory. We shall see if, uh... Kite remembers that. So far, no. I would actually move up the... Yeah, I would, just, I would honestly just move the mortar to capture it. Because it's so close to base, you could easily retreat it back. Um, Kite, what are you getting? You're getting phase 1, so you're upgrading to phase 2. The problem with penals is the fact they're not only heavy infantry, but they have a heavy AT component. Ah, nice job. Forgot to... For, you forgot to capture it. So you have to go all the way back and be like, Alright, another 10 seconds on this point. Hold on. Anyway... Nice idea, go around the building. The problem is there's so many, as you can see here, ways to shoot. Ignore that. Um, that that engineer squad is still going to take out that pioneer squad in most circumstances. But, moving on, PL troops are playing fire on that pioneer squad, pushing them back. We have grenadiers moving up. Looks like trying to fight some penals. Penals in heavy cover. They are not, so they are screwed, honestly. Quite honestly. They are in a bit of a pickle now it's not entirely down again they have some areas in which they can come back from it's like oh great shot what are you talking about well yes sure they're grabbing the fuel but all they have to do is simply get over and grab this point point. and now there's penal troops there the mortar is still hidden but the mg is barely covering it now i think he's trying to get close enough for a satchel i don't think he's going to make the distance especially with that cover right there um so Kite still, ma is he making another bunk? Oh no, he's making the light mechanized. So this could be good for him getting some, uh, what is it called? Um, shoot, half track, thank you. Oh look, he just flanked the bunker, like I said. Yeah, when they have penal troops, bunkers are not a good idea, especially in a 1v1 map. You could have used that 150 munitions, uh, munitions, 60 munitions, 150 manpower on something else. I probably would have really helped you out. Anyway. 
Wow, someone just flew into the air. Great ears trying to open fire, but again, they're typically weaker, so they're not going to really, you know, win. Unless you get a nice rifle grenade or a mortar hit. Come on, mortar. Nothing. They're closing the gap because they realize, oh, we're the boss. And I like how his micro is. He's making sure he can't throw a rifle grenade or anything. And also, the mortar doesn't hit him. Wow, that's amazing. Friendly fire. So, kite saving up. China? Yeah, I'm assuming he's saving for the half track at this point. Oh, can he kill the squad? No, he can't. Oh, don't die. Oh, yep. And, yep, he just falls. Penalist group managed to live. Engineer squad did not. We have Grenadiers. Pedro Grenadiers specifically moving in. Why are you moving up the mortar? Okay, stop going for that field and capture this territory. Because right now you have a lot of piece of, You have a lot of territory that could be captured but isn't. Also, I love the, how you're getting a scout car. Really? A scout car. Now, I, I could get what you're saying. Oh, great shot. It's the scout car. That's an auto cannon. Yeah, but these things have PTRS rifles. Typically, they can upgrade to them. So, wouldn't it make more sense to get a flame half-track or reinforce the guys on the front to survive? Now, you could say, oh, great shot. Yeah, the munitions, you know, if you didn't waste it on the MG and connect the damn territory, then you would be fine. Also, very nice job. Usually, people at the scout car get very close. And it got annihilated. Well, the penal troop did. This thing got hurt by the satchel charge, but it still survived. It just needs to heal. Unfortunately, it's going to take some time because his engineer squad is currently out of order. So that's an issue. So your player still has yet to get anything. Um, he could rush up for the the light, um, and then go into the more, you know, you get you get the better stuff of the armor companies. But again, we'll see. He did make sure that he has field mags. That's actually really good. Even though these mags are kind of just like phasing into each other right now. Which is really, really weird. I mean, that's freaky. Welcome to CH2, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, besides the human centipede, moving on from that. We have actually him finally pushing up to grab that territory. So congratulations on that, fam. Very happy for you. Um, actually, a big infantry battle on the left. Hands right here showing what they can do close up. Pushing back the penal troops. And now he needs to move up the Grandier squad to uh, help support. Looks like Mortar is also coming into support. He has four, he's pretty much going all penals, which is... You could say, oh, great shot. He's spamming. Yes, he is, kind of. He's as That's the only thing. But that could just be his frontline infantry. The German player has a much bigger variety. And he, okay, please microwave that. Oh, wow. You still got in range enough for it to hurt your engine. And I see another satchel in your future. But at least you grab the munitions and at least now you grab the fuel. So you're not that far down. You're getting better. The scout car is slowly making its retreat. Like, please don't satchel me. Please don't satchel me. Please don't satchel me. Why well, are coming in? Very nice hit on those penals. We have that Tankoya but battalion going out. But again, to get to the next one, he has to make this. It's weird how the Soviets have to make this and then the next one while the Germans are like, hey, we could just skip it. It's great. Um, sure, you can skip it. Why can't we? But anyway, Panzergrad ears. I know it would be unbalanced. Uh, <laughs> Panzergrad ears moving. It's like, it's like when the SU-76 was in the last tier. And it's like, who the hell would use the, he the, in the, the, the last one? The mechanized Campania. Well, who would use a SU-76? So they rearrange that, and it's it's amazing how much more that unit is now used because it's in the lighter one. Oh, what would he go? Oh, elite troops. This is not bad per se. I I'm not the biggest fan of the Tiger Ace. I I don't care for the Tiger Ace that much, but I can understand why people do enjoy it. Um, but again. You get the smoke with it, so at least the armor stays alive. Stormtroopers are decent. And ABU goes to Shock Rifle, Frontline Tactics, which essentially is get heavy infantry, heavy armor, and some fire. And uh, that's the Soviets will call it a day. Penal troops and PQRS rifles. The, this thing has to pull back. Hey, I'm just I'm just double-checking. So, you have another MG, right? Yep. In a building, right? Yep. And what's stopping them from just satcheling it? I guess the only thing... Oh, there it goes. Oh, you are very lucky. Was that actually a... I think he actually kind of missed the building a little bit. Maybe. 
I do know this side looks dramatically different than this side. This side looks like a comfy home, maybe a break-in. This side looks like a bomb hit it. MG holding back the penal, so right now, yep. The German player kind of focusing more on anti-infantry tactics and kind of having a nice, wide, large army. Very, helping out a lot. Now the question is, is he going to turn the MG to suppress these guys coming on the flank? Or no, he's going to play Stormtroopers. Very, very cool. Unfortunately, I think it, I do think a satchel is going out. Oh, good. You, you're getting out of the building. Oh, but he anticipated that. MG is running for its life. Units are falling back. Oh, shoot. They killed the MG. It was Vet 1, too. Curse you. He had armor-piercing rounds. But anyway, I, we have guys with SDG-44s, which are very powerful infantry. Oh, uh, shoot. They grabbed it. Stormtrooper's moving in. Stormtrooper, stop him. Oh, they got the one, man. Scout car going after it. Scout car's like, not my MG. Actually, funny enough, that is about to run into this MG. So, oh, no, never mind. This MG's falling back. He, j he just realized, like, oh, he should have kept it up. There we go. Well, congratulations. Now it's next to his base. Wow, the fact that it did not get in there is like by a hair. It was almost an MG range. That, that's terrible. Anyway, it looks like Pinos are pushing on the left. Took some heavy losses. Um, right now, he doesn't have a lot to get more. He is getting a T-34, which could be effective, but if he gets Panzer Grandiers equipped with the Panzer Shreks, that could be a big issue. A very big issue. Uh, is he going to get that? I don't think so. I also find it hilarious how this option for the Jaeger Infantry Package is still available. When if you read right here, it says four Sturm uh assault rifles. It's like you have four. And instead, we're like, eh, let's go with the Jaeger Infantry. I prefer assault rifles, honestly. But that's me. So. Flamethrower unit just head going around. We have another big push on the left, decapping some territory. But T-34 is rolling in, and uh, Kite doesn't have really anything to fight that. I like how you smoke for a scout car. It's like, so what do you think? The T-34 is not going to charge you right now? Oh my god, that, that escaped. Holy crud. Although if he again, if he he honestly could engage. Uh, T34 does not give a fuck and going straight into the base. Wow. AT gun coming out. Panzer Grenadiers. I would run back to base with Panzer Shrek. That T34 really wants to kill that scout car. Now it's like, what was I doing? Oh, right. I've selected memory. I was hunting something. I think it went this way. Scout car hiding around the bush. T-34, seeing where it's going, deploys smoke again to escape. What is this? A Tom and Jerry can... can it's like a... It's either a Tom and Jerry or a goddamn Roadrunner. AT gun opening fire. Move this thing up for a Panzer Shrek. My god. After all that, he finally got the scout car. Congratulations. Literally, I, j I, I just witnessed a yeah, better idea would be a Roadrunner cartoon. Just falling back. Anyway, in the meantime, he's getting more infantry and actually got shock troops. Right now, he's doing pretty damn good with his forces. Stuff long range and stuff to close the gap with short range. So, we'll see how things go. This guy's moving up. I don't understand why. You have no Panzer Shreks. I'm assuming you're trying to scare him, but he can see you have no Panzer Shreks. Also, retreat before the shock troops eat you alive, which they might. T-34 moving up. A T-gun on standby. MG on standby. Maybe move up the T-gun to cover the MG. 
They deploy smoke so they can close the gap, though. They can see everything on the left just fine. Again, fog of war. NG still fighting on the left. We have shock troops throwing a grenade in that building. They need to get out now. Wow, that did nothing. That was the weakest shock troop grenade. It's like someone was t make messing with grenades and they accidentally blew one up. So they cobbled together like the remains of one. Be like, okay, this is a grenade. Throw it in the Soviet stockpile. I'm sure it'll be fine. Also, Jesus Christ. <sighs> okay. I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to do single fire on this thing to make him better assault. But it also makes them weaker. You have to have something else hitting... In the meantime, otherwise you're kind of in a bad position. I love how this AT gun's also firing at the shock troops. You have, do you have anything? No. You're just trying to hope, be hopeful and having something kill it. But shock troops are still shock troops. And they're still very powerful. They may not have the effectiveness as they currently did, but they're still shock troops. Anyway, penal troops and engineer squad moving up. MG now opening fire. Can it kill it? No, but it weakened down the three men. So, Kite. Let's we'll see if he can get a Tiger Ace. No, he, 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 do, he doesn't have support armor corps right now. He could make it one, but he doesn't have the manpower. Um, he lost Stormtroopers, which is a big uh-oh. Uh, he needs Panzer Shreks. Which he just got the upgrade for, so congrats on that. Um, MG trying to capture this building, but we're about to see Soviet fire rain down on them. No, no, I'm, I'm literally being serious. Soviet fire. Anyway, force is going left. Moving up, penal troops taking mid again. Take that star, kids made points for as long as possible. PTRS rifles moving on the left. I don't see a way. Right, I don't wrong. Right now, it looks like an equal army, but with a veterancy and unit composition and just resource extra, I have to give right now edge to Soviet. Soviet has better men. They have better veterancy. They have a more stable army. Well, the Germans are kind of more of a hodgepodge group, which can work, which can work if you're set up and, you know, and everything's going your way. Right now, you have an AT gun that's not... All that focus MG that's currently not hitting anything because again it's being flanked. Bundle grenade would fix that. If they try to go in for they try to steal that MG, it's not it's, it will not work out for them. Hopefully it won't work out for them. Yep. Oh, you're an idiot. You just lost the penal squad. Now if they kill that MG, yeah, that's that I mean that, yeah. Congrats, congrats for being an idiot. Um Oh, so close! AT gun going for the final shot, but alas, they cannot miss the target. T-34 doing a real ballsy move by coming in right close to the AT gun. But I guess he was trying to help and realized, oh, that's probably not a good idea. But yeah, he lost a penal troop, so... Okay. Great. Panzergrenadiers, your best weapon against the T-34 on the front line. Maybe have something else. At least the MG's there, so we can express the, that... Uh, that group and then you can move up the AT gun or fire can just be deployed and just burn everything over here move up your Panzer Grenadier squad and move around your AT because right now he all he has to do is just run him over you're still in fire you're getting veterancy but you are still on fire AT gun opening fire on the T-34 trying to push it back looks like they're able to do just that And, yeah, things are going pretty damn well. Well, yeah, the Soviet players are about to get a ton more penal frontline troops. Well, this guy's just now getting a Panzer IV. If all those, essentially, here's the issue. If all those penals get PTRS rifles and satchel the Panzer IV, uh, Kite's screwed. Like, in just short, Kite would be, Kite would be fucked. But that's me. Also, now he has an MG, so we can help lock down territory. Um, yeah, and then Kite currently is just barely reinforcing his men, while the Soviet player is very easily getting more and more Soviets to fight for his cause. Um, penal troops trying to grab some territory. Probably not.
not the best idea to go so far out to grab a fuel. Maybe, yeah, just grab the munitions. You need munitions, let's be honest. MG going after shock troops. They're throwing a smoke grenade. Didn't manage to throw it in time. Did not work out. Pinnels on the right. AT gun still guarding this area. Maybe move it over here so you have a better vantage point. This shrubbery is kind of blocking some of your sight lines. Panzer IV moving up. Now, this could be the game change. This could be where a kite comes in for the blow. And again, he could. He absolutely could. But we'll see. The Soviet player now launching his assault. Looks like moving a bunch of troops everywhere. MG kind of. Where the hell are you? Oh, kite being reinforced. Wow, this penal troop is being annihilated. But again, it's a recruit. It's a lower rank. MG moving up. Set down. If I were you, set down. Shock troops moving in to vet two. But the problem is he is all grouped up. So guess what? Literally, Hellfire is going to come down on them. I mean, nice idea to keep pushing. But literally, you're going to want to retreat. Also, IS-2. Wow, IS-2 just spelled doom for you. It's like, I just got Panzer IV. It's like, that's great. They just got a, a behemoth. Wow. All right. T-34 escort on the IS-2. Wow, very lucky that Panzer IV didn't get obliterated. Pack gun opening fire, but getting some bounces, which makes sense. That it is a heavy tank, so it has more likely chance to... Bounce rounds. Panzer IV on standby can use the MG and, other, and his main turret to pull back that penal troop moving in with PTRS. It just has to keep the distance. It should be fine. Stormtroopers being deployed. All right. Hey, I'm just pointing it out there, but maybe you want to see, um, like, if you are going to use it, maybe save up for uh, 800 manpower so you can fight the IS-2 with a tie grace because right now that's probably your saving grace do I think it's a good idea no because I don't like the fact that you don't get any fuel from it and manpower is severely reduced so then yeah you really are at a disadvantage but if you truly think that you can fight it then uh, be my guess wow pioneer squads like we capture territory and the Soviets like excuse me we're just gonna murder you as we pass by Wow. Panzer IV somehow surviving a direct IS-2 shot. Sure, why not? Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. Resource-wise, absolutely go to allies. I mean, right now, it's they're trouncing the Axis on points. T-34 on standby. IS-2 getting healed. Again, IS-2, nothing to sneeze at. Very powerful. Very effective unit. The problem is its main gun is not as great as anyone would. I don't know. I just find it just doesn't penetrate all that well. But that's me. Um, the enemy is reduced to 200 points. On the left hand side we have shock troops going out. Looks like we had an MG that may have just did a short sprint or short fire burst on it. Yep, yep, there they go. Grab some, get that territory back with your pioneers. Maybe heal the Panzer IV and watch out for the T-34 on your flank. That's currently hanging at the base because you pushed it out there enough to where the MG can no longer cover from a certain angle. So congratulations on that. I wonder if we can actually drop. Well, probably not because it's still technically in the base. Pathfinding for the win, front and back. Um, I is two coming back. Stormtroopers trying to get a Panzer Shrek upgrade, but again, it's one Panzer Shrek? Yeah, one Panzer Shrek. So, yeah, it's not going to be all that effective. I would. Yeah. So, at this point, stay off for a Tiger Ace. And pray to God that it, you can actually hold out with all your units long enough to win. T 34 going on the flank may not be the best idea. Uh, no, T 34 has to pull back. Panzer IV. Demolishing the Soviet forces. Actually, grab that uh, PTR. Oh, uh, no, sorry, flamethrower unit, engineer squad. That might not be a bad thing to get. Uh, but the problem is, right now, we can actually double check with the Allied resource. Why? 
Why are you deploying stormtroopers? You're a point and a half away from getting a tiger ace. I would absolutely make sure you have 800 manpower at this point. Um, I know you're getting low on points, but let's be honest, you're not going to be able to really hold that off for too long. But whatever, you decapped it, now you're back in the building and you're hopeful to just hold that territory for as long as possible. But, uh, Mama's coming over and I don't think you're going to last all, all that long with an IS-2 firing at a house. It's like, uh, we have some enemies in a building. And it's like, don't worry comrade, we got this. Soviets opening fire at the building. Blowing them to kingdom come. The yeah. Doing what they do best. Now there is a flank coming in with uh, some stormtroopers. Not surviving all that long. Those guys are. Uh, more street troopers on the run. Well, the IS-2 kill it. No, barely misses. And that's actually a big problem. I find the IS-2 guns miss quite a bit. But when they hit, oh boy, they hit pretty damn well. Panzer IV moving in, trying to kill the shock troops. Again, not. I like how he's been using the Panzer IV. Tight, not bad. And at least he's trying to make sure that his Panzer IV is only engaging. We're trying to hold back as much infantry and armor as possible, even though he knows that thing can't win in a direct fight. It's just doing side hits and side flanks. Okay, now is the time where if he didn't get stormtroopers, I'm just pointing it out there, if he didn't get it, he would have pretty much been able to get a tiger ace and why do i keep mentioning tiger ace well that's the only thing that can kill an is2 and right now with his uh with abu's like rapid deployment of infantry he, if he kills the heavy armor then at, at the very least he has some he can buy some time and mob up infantry and kind of take over a majority of the map all right, so we'll still see what happens. T-34 going left, looks like, wow, okay, nice job, killed the Pinchard group. But here's the thing, not a lot of infantry that really take that territory. He has one assault unit, and that's really a support unit, to be quite honest. MG just very nicely holding that flank, making sure he can't come in. Uh, that being said, T-34 is like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm bet two now. Pack gun moving up. I would stop moving. Uh, T IS-2 moving in. Run away. Why you would heal that car close up, I don't know. Or do now, this could be the big issue. If the IS-2 is an idiot, and if, this is an if, and charges the base, and Tiger Ace deploys, Tiger Ace could overwhelm it. Because again, it's, it can't, the infantry can't support. So essentially, a but, pack gun just got removed and now it's moving back. So most likely that will not happen. But again, he has to be very careful of the Tiger Ace because one penal satchel and that thing would be a goner. So let's fast forward just a tiny bit. Come on. Deploy. Give me the Tiger Ace. G give it to me. Nice satchel, by the way. I really want to go off. Love how in the replay I can adjust it. It's just like, no, sorry, you can't. It won't blow up. Kite currently healing his forces. Most likely trying to save up as much manpower as possible before deploying that along with fuel. But let's be honest. It going 90% is just, what, one fuel per turn, which is not a huge decrease if you think about it. Also, he could possibly get a Panzer IV and then also the Tiger Ace and have a huge armor group kind of move up. He could honestly do that. But yeah, they're trying to kill the pack gun. I completely get why. Remove that from the enemy's control. Tiger A's pathfinding issue. Oh boy. Now here comes the final climactic battle. Panzer IV pulling back. IS-2 now coming on the flank. Getting some nice hits on the IS-2. But IS-2... Not going down without a fight. It's a nice counter hit on the Tiger Ace. Tiger Ace, though, moving up. Tiger Ace pressing, think he's the boss. But again, Penal's on the flank, waiting, lying in wait. If I had to assume, I expect the, uh, the satchel. Oh, one more shot. Tiger Ace charging him all the way into the Soviet HQ. 
Bounce. We got a bounce. Another bounce. He's like, fuck it, I must go. A third bounce. Oh, no. He killed the ice, too. But the Tiger Ace is surely going to meet its untimely demise at the hands of a T-34. Man, where was that Panzer IV? Up, oh, he's like, GG. And then he's just like, it ends. He, oh, wow, he left. Wow, doesn't even want to surrender. I just surrender at this point. But in any case, um, yeah, he should have healed. And also, yeah, I would have waited a few more seconds and got a Panzer IV. And kind of just charged with a massive armor group. Maybe that would have worked. Um, but yeah, I feel like your infantry was kind of bad, Kite. I feel like ABU, your infantry actually was well done, well supported. You did have a few times where you fucked up. But same thing, I would say, for Kite. So overall, not a bad game. Overall, with damage, Kite, you got more. Uh, just, wow. Almost getting an equal, I'm sorry, almost equal, but ABCU, again, is Soviet, so the fact that he almost got, I mean, it's definitely a little farther, but it's still, for a Soviet player, that's not a bad KD, because <laughs> I typically see Soviet players where it's like, yes, I, I, I killed, for every one man I killed, I lost three Soviet men, and that was a good day, so I mean, nice job, but in any case, uh, let's double check for damage. Penal troops were the best, and nice job with the vehicle destroyer. Kite, pack gun. Yeah, that pack gun was pretty damn good. Even though it could have been positioned better and could have done a little better. But overall, not bad. But in any case, guys, that's game. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. That truly helps me out. But in any case, I will see you all on the next CUH2 replay. Bye, guys.